I'm Ray Preston. Welcome back to Theory of Flight. We're continuing our discussion of how the aerodynamic force is created. Now you may have heard people say there's no such thing as a perfect vacuum, even in outer space. Now I don't know about outer space. I've never been there. But I'm here to tell you there is such a thing as a perfect vacuum. And I'm going to show you one. Want to see it? There it is. That's a perfect vacuum. Now you're thinking, how is that a perfect vacuum? Well, in order to understand, we have to introduce another theory. It's a very simple theory, one so simple that everyone accepts it. In fact, it's so simple, many people don't even recognize that it is a theory. But the theory says this, no two objects can occupy the same point in space. So I've got the ball here, and I've got my little model airplane, and if I try to put my model airplane in the same place as the ball, I can't do that. I can have the model there, I can have the ball there, but I can't have them both there. Now, this theory doesn't just apply to balls and airplanes. It applies to everything. So, if the ball is there, then there's no air there. Now, I know what you're saying. That ball is obviously hollow. There's air inside the ball. And you're right. I didn't want to have to stand here holding up a bowling ball. But the air inside this ball is different because the ball is airtight. The air inside the ball is trapped there. If I move the ball, the air inside the ball moves with it. So I'm talking about a vacuum in terms of the air in the room here. So in terms of room air, if I put the ball there, there is no room air there at all right now. Not even one molecule. The density is zero. And if the density is zero, we learned from last time, that means the pressure is zero. So we've got a perfect vacuum. Zero pressure, zero density right there. Now what would happen if I dropped the ball? The ball is going to fall out of that vacuum. Now, have a look at this animation here for a second. You've seen this one before. It shows the kinetic theory of gases. All the blue dots are air molecules zip-zapping around at the speed of sound, bouncing off the walls. Now, imagine we introduce the ball into this. So the red circle now represents the ball. And you can see the air molecules are bouncing off the ball. And Therefore, they're creating an air pressure on that ball. But what you can't see right now is that there's a perfect vacuum there because that ball is taking up space. There's literally no air molecules there at all. Now, I'm going to show you the vacuum by making that ball disappear. So watch closely because here it goes. Go. Did you see the vacuum? And did you see it fill in very quickly? Now, of course, the molecules in the animation are going way less than the speed of sound. If they were moving at the speed of sound, this thing would just be a blur. But even at the slow speed that they're going, that vacuum filled in very quickly. But that doesn't change the fact that the vacuum was there. Just for a fraction of a second, there was a vacuum. That means there was a low pressure above the ball. Now we have to ask ourselves a question. We can see here the beginnings of how the aerodynamic force forms. But in order to quantify it, we've got to ask ourselves the question, how much pressure is there in this room? That's where things get annoying. In aviation, we got way too many different units. You could say it's 29.92 inches of mercury, or it's 760 millimeters of mercury, or it's 1,013 millibars, or 101 kilopascals, or 14.1 psi. Here's another unit I want you to put in your mind. There's 144 square inches in a square foot. So if it's 14 PSI, that's 2,030 pounds per square foot. Now, if I look at this ball, and I get my ruler out, and I measure it, yeah, it's at least a foot across, and a foot, it's about a square foot. That means just on one side of the ball, there's at least 2,000 pounds of force pushing on this ball. So 
when I hold the ball like that. There's 2,000 pounds of force available in the bottom ready to lift that ball up out of my hands. Bad news is there's exactly 2,000 pounds of air pressure at the top ready to push it back down. The first question I've got to ask myself is, how much does the ball weigh? So let me get my scale out and we'll find the answer to that. So I'll turn my scale on and it's calibrated to zero, reading in pounds, and the ball weighs zero pounds and six ounces. Okay, zero pounds and six ounces. When the ball falls out of that vacuum, all I need, when the ball falls out, remember, it's a perfect vacuum. There's zero pressure there, zero. If it was to stay zero on the top with 2,000 on the bottom, I'd get 2,000 pounds of force. That's way more than I need. I only need six ounces. So the ball falls out of that vacuum. The air rushes in at the speed of sound. But as the ball goes faster and faster, pretty soon, there's just going to be a little bit of a residual vacuum above the ball. It only needs six ounces worth, and this ball will be at terminal velocity. Look at it in this animation. In this animation, again, the red circle represents the ball, and this time I've made the air just blue. So that blue rectangle represents the air. Now, make the ball invisible for just a second. The ball is still there. It's just invisible. So the white circle, that's the vacuum. That's the perfect vacuum. There are no air molecules there at all. Now, we'll put the ball back so you can see the ball. And now we're going to drop the ball. So the ball drops and it falls out of that vacuum. So you can now see that white above it representing the vacuum. Now, of course, the air starts to flow in immediately from all directions to fill that vacuum. And it's going to fill really quick with the air coming in at the speed of sound. But nevertheless, as the ball drops, there's going to be a slight residual pressure there. And that's going to generate the aerodynamic force. So we can draw a line straight up like that. We can bring our x and y axis in, annoy our high school teacher again, draw it with the x axis vertical, y axis over here, and we've got pure drag. We've got an aerodynamic force, but it's in the x axis, so we can say we've got an aerodynamic force, or if you like, you can say you've got a drag force, and that is going to uh, keep this ball falling at its terminal velocity. Okay, now there's a little bit more to it than that before we're ready to move on to a wing. Next time, we're going to have a look at Bernoulli's principle. But that's it for this episode, so I hope I'll see you again next time. Until then, I'm Ray Preston, and this is Theory of Flight.